um, the understanding of the hierarchy of beliefs and it is 1.7b now the hierarchy of beliefs is a concept which will release to you all kinds of wisdom and understanding when you grasp it and maybe if we started with an illustration it's going to look like an upside down pyramid with a cross at the bottom and above that a couple of crosses and above that a whole bunch of crosses, and above that crosses without number. And these represent what happens when a child records something perfectly but interprets it wrongly and comes to the wrong conclusion. And it could be, I'm dumb. It could be, life sucks. It could be, my feelings are all true. Or it could be that I'm powerless to make a difference. Now, those are basically primitive conclusions. And if you come to any one of them, they can ruin your life. So I'm dumb results in self-hatred, which will result in depression and inadequacy and failure. Life sucks results in um, uh, no longer having optimism or enthusiasm for life, and that results in depression. My feelings are all reliable, can result in bipolar disorder and emotional instability. Life isn't fair results in no effort, because what's the point? And I'm powerless results in perpetual victimhood and powerlessness. So if a child comes to one of these conclusions and it goes to sleep on a lie, if a child goes to sleep on a wrong conclusion, it's going to wake up Existential therapy can miss the boat when it focuses on your moods and emotions. Existential stroke cathartic. Um, Self-talk is addressed by positive thinking and that can miss the boat because it doesn't get underneath the positive thinking to the faulty beliefs. And um, rational uh, emotive therapy and cognitive therapy can miss the boat because it doesn't get to the subconscious. Cognitive rational or rational emotive. Now, it's quite important that you memorize this sequence because this is foundational to what we're teaching over the next two weeks. And this together is known as REBT which means rational, emotive, behavioral therapy. And this is what you're doing in your daily journaling. Have you got that sussed yet? So we start this class with REBT for several reasons. One, it's logical. Two, it's Christian friendly. It's not anti-faith or anti-religion um, or anti-Christian. In fact, there's quite a few verses in Scripture that you could say are REBT statements. Can anyone think of one? Again? Rational, emotive, behavioral therapy. See, the Bible says, uh, guard the affections of the heart, for out of them spring all the issues of life. Here's the affections of the heart down here. And here's all the issues of life up here. You got that? So um, what I've done is I've kind of done a souped up version. I've put a turbo on REBT and driven it down into the assumptions as well. So... When you grasp that, you realize that there is an antidote for every poisonous thought. 
and there's an antidote for every negative behavior. And you start to understand that it starts in the... Now, what I spent some time doing about 20 years ago is working out what were the major basic assumptions that people could be loyal to, and I called them king lies. Now, a king lie spawns prince lies, and here they are here. And so I sort of began to compose truth coaches to annihilate these mistaken beliefs or misbeliefs. And William Backus, telling yourself the truth, introduces you to this process. For example, he says that a lot of mental illness is through what he calls crucializing. And crucializing is a habit of calling things crucial that actually are not crucial. They're uncomfortable, they're nuisance, but they're not crucial. And you can go through life crucializing stuff that actually isn't even crucial. And so the king lie here would be everything's crucial. And we could call that, if you like, living, uh, thinking in extreme ways. Everything is crucial. And this is the worry war. This is the person who's always stressed. This is the person who's always anxious and worried and troubled about many things. Martha, Martha thought everything was crucial. Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things, but only one thing is crucial, and Mary's found it. Luke 10. That's what Christ said to, to Martha, because she was busy crucializing stuff. It was crucial to have the lunch ready and the meat cooked, and the meal ready on time, and the house cleaned, and everything vacuumed. Everything was crucial. She was just a stressed mess. So um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can take from this. You'll swing between peace and anger, optimism and pessimism, uh, comfort and discomfort, security and insecurity, You'll just always be swinging because you've got contradictory beliefs deep in your paradigm. Now just think about this. Contradictory beliefs deep in your paradigm are going to lead to constant instability in your behavior and in your moods and emotions. And if you marry a person like this, you're in for a roller coaster ride. Life will never be dull if you're married to this person. Sometimes you'll long for it to be dull, but it won't be. Because, you know, next mood coming up. Now, it also explains why existential cathartic relief isn't permanent. Getting touch, in touch with your emotions is not particularly healing if your emotions are lying to you. You understand that? Positive thinking is not going to be enough if underneath you've still got negative beliefs. If you put positive thing over the top of negative beliefs, how long is that going to last you? I love these people that get out of bed in the morning and they get to the mirror and they say, day by day in every way you're getting better and better and better. But if you're inadequate, there's a reason for it. 2.2, you'll see there the sequence and you'll see here how you're following that sequence in your daily journaling. That's why the daily journaling is so important page in the manual good good now 2.2 just reminds us that there is a sequence and at the top you see behavior actions that's the result feelings and emotions are the result of the self-talk thinking and self-talk is born out of the beliefs and the beliefs and conclusions are either in agreement with god or they're not they're either in harmony with reality or they're not now the arrow points both ways can some bright person tell me why that is? You do something long enough, it will affect your emotions. Yeah. When you are sick and you go to a doctor, do you go from um, symptoms to diagnosis or from diagnosis to symptoms? Diagnosis symptoms. But if you don't tell him the, di the symptoms, how can he diagnose? He doesn't take one look at you and say, okay, you've got Hodgkin's disease. He does a you know, test first. So he works from the symptoms to the diagnosis. Right? Whereas in life, you start 
with the beliefs and work your way out to the behavior, the doctor starts with the behavior and works the way back to the cause. So diagnosis is working backwards, whereas life works forwards. So when I'm counseling people, I start with listening to their lives and then I work my way down through their moods, through their self-talk, down to their beliefs. Whereas in life, they work from beliefs to self-talk to moods to behavior. Now, um, trace the lie so you can face the lie, so you can replace the lie. That's my job. Trace it, face it, replace it. And I want to teach you how to do that because the troubles in your life are the result of a lack of tracing, facing, and replacing. So trace the mis.